And welcome again to Real to Real. Today I'm standing in Springfield's Court Square, just outside historic First Church. Court Square, founded in 1636, was the focal point for the earliest settlers who called this area their new home. And that's because these were individuals who sought our shores to be able to enjoy their free expression of religion. An important foundation from the earliest days of our nation, one of the first rights granted under our treasured Constitution. Now these same religious liberties have been in the headlines over the last several months and many say they are now under attack in America. At issue is the Health and Human Services mandate forcing all employers, including Catholic institutions, to cover birth control, sterilization, and some abortion-inducing drugs, something against the church's teaching on the sanctity of life. And because of that, the bishops are asking Catholics to stand with them in this critical fight to protect religious liberty. Real to Real's Carolee McGrath now has more on this fortnight of freedom. As the nation is about to celebrate another birthday, Americans are reminded of just how precious freedom is. Our brave servicemen and women have laid down their lives to protect the American way of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Our Constitution guarantees freedom of speech and freedom of religion, but recently the latter has come under attack in the United States, and the Catholic bishops are asking people to stand with them to defend religious liberty. Religious liberty is the first of our liberties and the source of all the others. Archbishop William Lorry of the Archdiocese of Baltimore leads the U.S. Bishops Ad Hoc Committee on Religious Freedom. Lorry has been out front and outspoken on this issue, testifying before Congress. At issue is the mandate handed down by the Secretary of the Department of Health and Human Services, Kathleen Sebelius, which forces Catholic institutions to pay for contraceptives, sterilization, and abortion-inducing drugs for their employees. The new regulation is for all insurers with only a narrow exemption for certain religious employers, which means Catholic universities, Catholic charities, and hospitals have to provide what's billed as preventative health care services for women, even though this practice violates the very sacred beliefs the church holds on life. The religious employers that would qualify for the exemption are only those that serve and employ Catholics, for example, or people of the same religion, which would disqualify Mercy Hospital in Springfield, for example. We would have to supply our employees with contraceptives free of charge, and that's the issue at hand, and we feel that it is um, a conscience issue, and it certainly goes against our very basic and fundamental principles. Freedom isn't free. We've just seen a change in definitions in what religious liberty is all about. Springfield Bishop Timothy McDonald says the bishops have long supported health care reform, but this anti-life mandate forced upon religious providers is not something they can accept. Once the government starts to define what religion is or isn't, how far does it go? The First Amendment was meant to protect religion from government and government from religion. Right now, they're overstepping the bounds, and we have to fight back. The bishops have asked Catholics to learn more about the issue and pray with them during a special Fortnight for Freedom, which kicked off on June 21st. The Fortnight for Freedom emphasizes prayer, catechesis, and public outreach. Up to this point, the works that flow from our worship have always been part of our religious institutions. Now the government is telling the church that, oh no, something like Catholic Charities is not covered by the First Amendment. Something like a Catholic college is not covered by the First Amendment. The government is de redefining what is and what isn't religious. And that's stepping over the boundary of the First Amendment. This is not about medicine, it's about ideology, it is about politics and political power. That's it. Professor Robert George is McCormick Professor of Jurisprudence and Director of the James Madison Program in American Ideals and Institutions at Princeton University. It would force Catholic institutions, Catholic employers, and not just Catholics, but 
evangelical Protestants and other Protestants who are pro-life, Orthodox Jews, Muslims who are pro-life, to provide, to pay for health insurance coverage to cover not only contraceptives and sterilizations, but abortion-inducing drugs, making all of us at some level complicit in the taking of human life by abortifacients. Professor George added the argument is not about birth control, which is readily available and which women are free to choose if they want. Every honorable civil liberty uh, is rooted in the basic freedom that we know as freedom of religion, the rights of conscience. Uh, so it's very important for us to stand up against this mandate. The bishops have said that they will not comply. We as Catholics must say we will not comply. After the outcry from Catholic bishops, other religious leaders, and politicians, the Obama administration came up with a proposed accommodation. It would go something like this. The insurance companies, not Catholic charities say, would have to pay for contraception and other services. But many call this nothing more than an accounting trick. Lawyers for the USCCB and others say one way or another, Catholic employers would have to pay for those services through higher premiums. For many dioceses and Catholic institutions, including the Diocese of Springfield, it's even trickier because the diocese is a self-insured employer. Jack Egan, an attorney for the diocese, explains. Well, the Diocese of Springfield, like many other uh, Catholic dioceses, provides its medical insurance uh, through a concept called self-insurance. That is to say that there's no insurance company involved except as administrators. And under the so-called compromise, which really did not change the regulations, self-insurers would have to pay for these types of procedures. Professor Helen Alvare, an associate professor of law at George Mason University, says the birth control debate really should come down to numbers. She adds that the Catholic Church, which has been ridiculed for its stance on birth control, has been right all along. The studies show that the more emergency contraception they stick in literally into the pockets of teenage girls, the more pregnancy and abortions they get. Alvare, who assisted the Holy See on pro-life and women's issues, also worked for the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops to promote the sanctity of life. She says since the federal government began its campaign to provide low-cost contraception under a program called Title V, non-marital births quadrupled, jumping from 11% in 1970 to 41% in 2008. She says those stats show that contraception is not the magic pill everyone thought it would be. More than 50 Catholic organizations, including dioceses, schools, and hospitals, have filed suit and have been warning that such a mandate could force Catholic hospitals, charities, and schools out of business. Just recently, the Catholic Health Association, which in February stood behind the Obama administration's so-called accommodation, has now reversed course, saying the exemptions in the HHS mandate are too narrow. Well, we are the most law-abiding of law-abiding citizens. Catholics pride ourselves on our belief in the rule of law. We believe in the doctrine of the common good, and law is central to the common good. But if it comes to a pass where our choice is between obeying unjust laws made by men and the eternal law, the moral law, the natural law that comes to us from the very divine hand of God, we know which option to choose. Reporting for Real to Real, I'm Carolee McGrath.